want to go to the forest? <laughs> Welcome to The Internet Says It's True. This is a show where we learn something new every week, part of the WCBE podcast experience. Thanks for listening. Every week, I get a new topic for the show. So if you would like to submit a topic of something you learned recently, I would love to hear it. Just go to theinternetsaysitstrue.com, and right there on the left sidebar of the homepage, you'll see a form to submit your ideas to me. I would love to hear from you. Now let's find out today's topic. Hey, Michael, it's Matt Stanley. I was wondering, uh, did you ever hear about the woman who fell two miles out of an airplane and lived? I just read about it. It's crazy. This is a story I've heard about, but I didn't know any of the particulars. So I spent the week researching this. It turns out there are a few similar stories throughout the years, but this one is the most popular. There are stories of Annette Herfkins, Bahia Bakari, Sailor Gutzler, but today we're talking about a woman named Juliana Kopka. In 1968, German biologists Maria and Hans Wilhelm Kopka bought an abandoned cabin in a lowland rainforest in Peru. It was at the western foothill of the El Sierra mountain range, and their purpose in buying the cabin was to establish a new research station to study the local flora and fauna. They'd worked for the Museum of Natural History in Lima and had decided to embark on what was only meant to be a five-year mission at the research station, which they named Panguana. It was there that Maria and Hans Wilhelm's 14-year-old daughter, Juliana, got an unusual education. Instead of being in school in the bustling city of Lima, she was homeschooled in this Amazon rainforest research station. She would go out with her parents on their many trips into the wild, and that's where she learned things that a 14-year-old girl normally doesn't get to learn how to identify various types of insects, plants, and animals in the rainforest, and how to survive among them. Even though this education was great for her, the school back in Lima eventually said she had to return, and so she went back to the city to finish high school. When Juliana was 17, her mother had the idea to fly her back to Panguana to visit her father for Christmas. Maria returned to Lima to pick up her daughter, and the two of them would fly together, the plan was to fly from Lima to the small Iquitos airport on the 19th or 20th of December. But young Juliana was about to graduate high school. She wanted to attend her graduation ceremony in a dance and leave after that. So the two were forced to fly out on Christmas Eve, December 24th, 1971. And the only airline they could book was Lanza. That stood for Linnaeus Aéreas Nacionales Sociedad Anónima a struggling Peruvian airline with a poor reputation. Hans Wilhelm had protested them flying with Lanza in the past because it just didn't have a great reputation, but it was the only flight that was available that day. At noon on December 24th, Lanza Flight 508, a Lockheed L-188A Electra turboprop carrying 86 passengers, took off from Lima's Jorge Chavez International Airport. The final destination of the flight was Iquitos, Peru, with a scheduled stop happening at Pacupa, but the airline would never arrive. We'll continue this story after a quick break. If you are traveling this summer, if you're hiking, or even just plan on spending a lot of time around the home, Scotty Vest is a company that got its start on Shark Tank, and it's continued with great success. I learned about them from friends, and I love them because they're the perfect clothes for traveling, and now I actually am traveling quite a bit again starting this week. Uh, they have lightweight shirts that are great. They have hoodies and jackets, vests with tons of pockets. All of them, that's the theme with the, with the clothing. There are tons of pockets, and they're designed with commuting in mind. Go give them a look. It's scottyvest.com, and because you listen to this show, you get 15% off of Scotty Vest. Enter promo code tell me. It's tell me all one word. It's scottyvest.com. Promo code tell me, or just use the link that's in the show notes. So while I am doing a lot of in person shows now, I'm still doing virtual shows, which is really cool because I can do both and it works out as long as I'm home. I can do the virtual show. It's really cool to me that I'm still booking these shows. But if you are still being asked to go to work via Zoom, why not spruce up your appearance a little bit? Add some lighting, add some, some superior sound so that people aren't leaning in and saying, man, why, 
why doesn't that person get a better microphone or, or better lighting or a cooler backdrop? You can learn how to do all of this stuff. It is within your grasp, I promise, because Virtual Presenter Course helps you do it. They have a course online. It's an easy to follow set of courses. They teach you everything. They teach you lighting and sound. They teach you how to do virtual backdrops that actually look good. And they teach you how to set up your home broadcasting studio so that you will stand out next time you have one of those Zoom meetings. You're really going to impress people with this. Uh, and they have agreed to allow me to get you 20% off. So when you go to virtualpresentercourse.com, uh, do slash 30 after that. So virtualpresentercourse.com slash 30, and the discount will be automatically applied to your shopping cart. The link is also in the show notes. You're going to love this course. Just trust me on this one. I also should probably say that, yes, I realized I was just talking about someone uh, in a plane crash, never making to their destination, followed by an ad saying if you're traveling, but sometimes, you know, these are the ads. Sometimes that's how it shakes out. And it's not always going to be an awesome segue. So uh, let's keep on moving with the story. We're going to go back now to December 24th, 1971. 17-year-old Juliana and her mother, Maria Kopka, were on board Lanza Flight 508, and it had just taken off for Pacupa, Peru. The first half of the flight was relatively smooth, but as the flight with 86 passengers and six crew members flew over the Puerto Inca province, it encountered severe turbulence and heavy thunderstorms. It was at 21,000 feet. The plane shuddered, dipped, dropped, and bounced in the horrible storm. Items were thrown around the cabin, and the passengers began to scream. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning. The lightning struck the right wing of the L-188A and ignited the fuel tank blowing a hole in the aircraft. When Maria exclaimed, that's it, now it's all over, it would be the last words that Juliana would hear her mother say. The plane fell from an altitude of 9,843 feet. As the plane broke apart, Juliana's seat stayed connected in a row of three, which may have helped to slow it down during its descent. It fell through tall trees, further slowing her down. When she came to stop in the mud, still strapped to her seat, she had suffered a broken collarbone and gashes to her left leg and right arm. Her right eye was swollen completely shut, but somehow, despite falling nearly two miles from the sky, she was alive. For the next day and a half, she lay there, fading in and out of consciousness until she gained enough strength to start moving around and begin looking for her mother, who had been seated right next to her. She couldn't find her. Not being able to find her mother and suffering from the wounds on her body, she made the decision to start trying to find help. She had one sandal left from the crash, and her strategy was to throw the sandal ahead of herself to scare off any dangerous animals that might be lurking in the bush in front of her. She stumbled upon a small creek and began following the water. It led to a bigger creek and eventually to a river. She remembered something her dad had taught her in her days at Panguana. Following a river downstream will always lead to civilization. So downstream she headed. She kept her energy up by drinking rainwater off of leaves and eating a bag of candy she had found in the plane's wreckage. Her wounds began to become infected and infested with bugs and larvae. She continued on even after she ate the last piece of candy from the bag. Her watch had stopped working, so she had no idea what day it was. At one point, she came across an empty boat on the river, but no one was around it. She passed the boat to find a small path to a hut. That's where she found temporary shelter and a gas can. Despite the stinging pain, Juliana poured the gas on her wounds to disinfect them, or at the very least, to clean them of infestation. She had no idea how many days it had been. She used that small hut for shelter for the next day and a half. As the sun started to set the following evening, she heard voices approaching the cabin. It was three Peruvian fishermen who discovered her laying in the hut. They were amazed. This white girl in the middle of the rainforest appeared from nowhere. They brought her to the nearest village, and that village had a pilot 
who flew the 17-year-old to Pakulpa, where she was taken to a hospital and reunited with her father. Juliana had been walking through the rainforest of Peru by herself for 11 days. She was the only survivor out of 92 people on board Lanza Flight 508. Her mother's body was found two weeks later. There were many investigations and inquiries into why the plane crashed. Examining the wreckage showed that the plane was mostly made up of spare parts. Lanza had a poor safety record to begin with, and it's thought that the pilots felt pressure to push through the hazardous weather conditions because of the holiday. Lanza was stripped of their operating authority. They never flew another flight after that crash. Experts aren't entirely sure how Juliana survived the almost 10,000 foot fall to earth. As I said earlier, one of the theories is that her row of seats stayed together and may have acted as a sort of a parachute to slow her rate of descent. They also believe that falling onto a tree allowed her impact to be lessened by breaking through so many branches on the way down. Juliana Kopka's story has been made into several books and movies, most notably the film Wings of Flight by director Werner Herzog, who was interested in the story because he was originally scheduled to be flying on Lanza Flight 508 that day. As for Juliana, she honors the life of her mother through a long and successful career as a biologist. She's currently the director of a thriving research station that's now grown into a small camp responsible for publishing more than 180 biology research papers. She's the director of Panguana, the very place her parents founded and the place that taught her how to survive. Now it's time for the part of the podcast where I call a friend, and today I'm calling CJ Johnson. He's a hypnotist, and he runs an incredibly successful traveling game show company. He was one of the first guests on my live stream talk show, Joke, Story, Trick. CJ Johnson, how are you, man? It's great to see you. I'm amazing. Uh, yeah, it's great, great to be seen. It's like, yay! I, it's so close to being seeing people in person. We've done a little of that. It's great. I've been watching your social media, and you've been making a lot of amazing leather goods for you and your family, which is fantastic. I like doing stuff with my hands, and so I've been playing with the workshop, I've been playing with the the CNC machine and the Glowforge, and uh, my wife wanted something specifically that matched her garb for a Renaissance fair, and I was like, well, why don't I just get the stuff to make you something, and I started making it, and uh, now it's like all I... All I think about, I wake up in the morning, I'm like, I should go out and start making some stuff. It's, it's really kind of become a... That's been me with photography, CJ. Like, it's, I wake up in the morning and I'm like, do I have like a couple free hours today to get out to the woods and take some photos? Uh, so you don't know this. For the first question, we are playing for a Facebook profile status update. So that means... If you get it right, I will update my Facebook status to whatever you want. And you can have time to think about it. You can tell me tomorrow if you want. If you get it wrong, you have to update yours with whatever I want. Now, with that said, you and I are friends. I would not do anything that would be detrimental to your reputation. All right. And if and, sure. and I don't care about mine because I have a, a trick in my show where I get two people from the audience that tie me up with a rope, a hundred feet of rope. And if I can't escape in under two minutes... The person in the audience who I've been picking on all day gets to update my Facebook status. So my oh, friends and I let them update it anyway, even though I usually escape. Uh, I let them update it anyway. And so my friends are already conditioned that if there's some sort of off the wall Facebook status, they know that I just did the rope trick again. So <laughs> so for, so it's that a bigger stakes for you. So much now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's usually something. It was it was always something about Trump. Usually is what they what they would do. Uh, so here's the question. Question number one, when Juliana Kopka was a young girl in the 1970s, she had an unusual education exploring the rainforests around her parents' research station in the Peruvian jungle. This training came in handy for which one of these following reasons? A. She now lives and travels with a family of howler monkeys in the tropical rainforest. B. 
She survived an airplane crash and survived seven days alone in the rainforest. Or C, she was the winner of season 53 of Survivor. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw that one out. I don't think there's been 53 seasons of Survivor. Man, Howler Monkeys or Airplane Crash? I'm going with Airplane Crash. You are correct, CJ. I have to update my Facebook status now with whatever you want. And you can tell me tomorrow. You can tell me some other time. But people will know when it happens because uh, I'm sure you'll come up with something great. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I looked this up the other day and I didn't want to answer your question about how many seasons of Survivor because that would have given away. Uh, I believe there are 45 seasons of Survivor. So <laughs> it's darn near 53. It's ridiculous. The, how many se- There have been many seasons of Survivor. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, and there are howler monkeys in the Peruvian rainforest. But uh, she survived an airplane crash. She fell two miles. She was the only survivor out of uh, 86 total passengers, including crew. She was the only survivor uh, somehow miraculously lived flying or falling almost 10,000 feet from the air and then uh, lived 11 days alone in the rainforest. She fell two miles and lived? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And it's well documented. It's not like a story. I mean, her mother died on this airplane crash along with everyone else. And she was found by. uh, And so there are a few. uh, There are a few theories as to how she survived. One of them is her row of three seats stayed intact. And they think that it may have spun around and created sort of a slowing down parachute type effect. Also, she landed in a tall tree and broke the branches on the way down into the mud and then landed in like sort of a soft mud. So there were some other things that could have slowed it down. But even then, it seems absolutely impossible that this happened. That's it's yeah, it's it's unbelievable. Uh, my mind's blown. And my favorite part of this whole story is that her job now, she's still alive. And her job now is that she runs that research station that her parents started that she grew up in. And it's only because of that research station that she was able to survive for 11 days in the rainforest alone. Wow. And that's her job now. It's called Panguana is the name of the, of the research station. So you got that right. You're one for one. Question two is... V- it's, it's Panguana? Panguana, like Iguana, but Panguana. And it's a reference to... They named it after a bird that's it's in that area. So there must be a bird called Panguana. Okay. That so I was like, French pan is French for... for- Another language for bread. I'm like, Iguana is like, (laughs) and I'm like, is this crappy bread? No, in the rainforest, they teach how to make bread from iguanas. And that's why they named it that. Um, Not not at all. This question is deadly. Uh, So (laughs) you'll explain. I'm not not playing that high a stake. You'll understand. (laughs) uh, the, the, The stakes for this one are more fun. If you get this one wrong, you have to tell me about a road horror story. Or maybe an on-stage horror story, something crazy or funny or bad that's happened to you on stage. And if you get it right, I'll tell you one of mine. All right. And I'd really be just telling the audience because you've probably heard my road crazy stories uh, over the years. Because of her biologist parents, Juliana Kopka had studied what things in the rainforest were safe and what were dangerous. While she didn't eat any plants while she was stranded in the wild, this education helped her tremendously. I'm going to list three types of plants. Two of them are deadly. One of them is edible. You have to choose the one that won't kill you. So imagine, CJ, you're in the rainforest. There are three things to eat. Number one, A, oleander. B, rosary peas. Or C, white trillium. And this is going to be a total guess. I'm going to, what was the second one, Rose? Rosary peas. Rosary peas. I'm assuming those are peas that look like they're on a bead. That's exactly right. They look. They they look. Yeah, they look like the little rosary bead peas. Uh, I'm gonna say those will kill you. And then it was oleander. Oleander was the first one, and the last one was white trillium. I've never even heard of white trillium. I have heard of oleander, and I'm gonna guess that. I've heard of oleander because I was told not to eat that because it'll kill me. So I'm going to go with white trillium. CJ, you're alive. 
You've Woo! you have made it through the rainforest. Oleander was described by Pliny the Elder in ancient Rome uh, as he said, "It grows in sea bordering places and places near rivers, but ye flower and the leaves have a powerful destructive of dogs and asses and of mules and of most four footed living creatures." So that is deadly. Rosary peas. It only takes three micrograms to kill an adult if you if the seeds are scratched, broken, or chewed. It's like ricin, where you have to open up the the seed. However, white trillium can be utilized in diverse ways, from being a beautiful salad garnish to a use for uh, treating wounds. It works wonderfully as an alternative medicine. It has antiseptic powers. It's also a diuretic, um, and so chewing the flower is even said to cure snake bite and ease labor pains for women. So not only did you make it through the rainforest, but uh, your, your labor pains are lessened. And I, I've looked pregnant for quite a while. Yeah. <laughs> I just, this popped into my head today. So I have to tell you about a horror story. And this isn't really a horror story about on stage, but it's a funny story about when I was traveling. Um, occasionally, people like us, you're a hypnotist, a professional hypnotist, and you also run a very successful game show, mobile game show company. Um, but I am a magician and often get confused with being a hypnotist or a juggler or a different magician. And in the college performing market where I perform, there's another very popular magician. His name is Mike Super, his last name Super. And I showed up at a college and right there, the big advertisement on the calendar when you walk into the student union said today in the cafeteria, Mike Super. Which, whatever, I'm Michael Kent. I'm not Mike Super. Maybe they booked him and he had to, and they booked me because he couldn't do it or something. But they realized their mistake. And this is the best part of the story. They realized their mistake. And instead of redoing it, they wrote Kent after the word Super and put Super in quotation marks as if it was a nickname. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, <laughs> so they're like, oh, he won't mind being called Super. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay. So, <laughs> Did you take a snapshot of it and send it to Mike. I, he and I weren't buddies at the time. Um, if it had happened, you know, nowadays, probably, I probably would, but it was before <laughs> I really got along and knew him. Question oh, three. Uh, now you're, right. you're two for two. You're, you're killing it so far. The running prize for question three. It's always the same, and it's one of these stickers. This is a sticker that says, tell me what to Google with my old logo. That's what this podcast used to be called. But the week that I changed the podcast, I ordered the stickers. Or I got the stickers in, uh, and so now they're useless. And so you get to win one of these because I have a whole stack of them, and I need to get rid of them. Oh, but man, you, you were selling that sticker. You were you were making that highly coveted. It's yeah, it is. Well, it's I it's have a, a bunch. And it I is, need to get rid of them. It's it's a rarity though. I mean, there All will right, not right. be any more. However, this sticker is the official show uh, logo, and you'll get that as well. So for this question, um, you know what? This is a this is a, a a first on this show. I did not write a question number three. I'm looking at my list here. I have a question number four, and I didn't write a question number three. And so, by default, you win question number three. You are three for three, and you get a sticker. You Woo! were uh, the beneficiary, the benefactor of me just doing too much this week. So, <laughs> so I'll take my wins when I can get them. Yes, that. But that counts. That counts. Um, you know, and and you you won. Did you you did the trifecta on joke story trick? I had you on my on my live stream talk show and you did a joke, a story and a trick. So you won that too. I was um, the first, you were the first trifecta. You were the first on the list. Um, and you were the, the first few guests I had you very early on. Uh, and I go back and I look at those shows, by the way, if you want to watch joke story trick, if you're on my Patreon, it's available. All 60 episodes are available on my Patreon with celebrity guests like CJ. And, uh, they are all there ready to, ready to watch. Uh, and you can join for as little as a dollar a month. Commercial over. Question four. You're three for three. For this All question, right. this one's fun. We are playing for a nine volt battery test. Here's what I mean by that. Do you have a, a by the way, do you have a nine volt battery nearby? Oh, you do. Like, <laughs> it's in the, my, I have one in the package also. We both have nine volt batteries fresh in the package. 
So here's the here's the thing. If you get this question wrong, you have to do the tongue test. You have to touch the battery to your tongue. So we've turned into fear, fear factor on the show now. <laughs> and I've got a battery too. So um and I have often said I I test 9 volt it's whole, it's you probably shouldn't do it, but I test 9 volt batteries on my tongue to see if they're good before I put them in like a microphone or whatever. And I've often said I am so accurate with one of these. I could probably tell you within 10% accuracy of how much power is left in a 9 volt battery with my tongue. I probably could do that. We're going to test that on the show one week. I I think that would be a, that would be an amazing skill if you could do that. And you don't have to keep it on there. It just it's just a touch. It's just a touch. Okay. In the event of a plane crash, where is the safest place statistically to sit in the plane? Here are your three options. A. Middle seat in the back of the plane. B. Window seat over a wing. Or C. Middle seat in the front of the plane. A middle seat back of the plane. You were quick with that. You've, is this something that you've studied or you just, you're just using uh, your knowledge of having flown so much? I haven't studied it, but that's just one of those things where I've always sat behind the wing uh because i think i heard that so i've always i've always sat towards the back because i always have luggage and Mm -hmm. my luggage isn't gonna i'm not gonna get there before my luggage if i sit to the front so i always sit in the back because i heard it was safest i'm gonna go with that well you are correct uh you uh, would be safe est safe (laughs) est in the middle seat in the back of the plane in 2012 Researchers decided to take an uncrewed Boeing 727, so they took a 727, turned it into a drone, essentially, and they filled it with crash test dummies uh, and and cameras, and they flew it into the ground, right into the Mexican desert. And passengers at the back were still jostled around, and in some cases likely to suffer head injuries, especially if they weren't wearing seatbelts. But overall, they were much better off than, uh, than the rest of the crash dummies. So, it is time. I've got my battery. I've got my tongue. I wonder if this this probably won't make a sound. Let's okay. Here we go. Okay, now I'm going to say something about this. You see me? I'm touching this to my tongue for longer. This battery is not 100, percent and I just opened it. It just came out of this package, but I can tell you right now, there's no way that's a, that. I, this battery is like 80, percent and I wish that I had a way to test this. But uh, we are going to do a show about this. But that battery is not 100, percent that or I just have started enjoying this and I don't it doesn't shock me as what much What happens when you do that because I remember doing that when I was a kid but mm-hmm. I haven't done that in at least 30 years what happens is it completes the circuit um, just like uh, you know so you're the, the the electricity is flowing from the positive to the negative uh, terminal and it's using the saliva on your tongue as a as a conductor so it's and probably the skin on your tongue as well now i'm curious <laughs> but since i won i'm not going to okay good <laughs> okay good i'm gonna buy a i'm gonna get on amazon when we're done and i'm gonna buy a nine volt battery tester and i'm gonna make a video of this and i'll invite you on and we will do we'll do a how accurate is michael's tongue uh video and that will that'll go <laughs> on youtube that's a million hits guaranteed right there <laughs> that'll be available <laughs> for everyone we won't put that behind the patreon we'll put that out for everyone <laughs> All right, CJ, we've come to the end. This is question five, and this one is for all the marbles. If you get this wrong, I'm banning you from the show, never to be asked on again. Oh, my. Here's your question. What career-related accomplishment makes you most proud? The length of the relationships I have with people in business. Yeah, that's the right answer. Uh, And I know for, like, what's the, the longest... You've worked with someone. Uh, the promoters that I work with for my magic shows, which are the only magic shows, my first show with them on October 1st, 1994. Wow. And my tech boy was Brian Brushwood. <laughs> Brian Brushwood was your tech guy, huh? He was there for that show. He was running tech for me as, uh, as, as a student in college. That's amazing. So 94, what's that, 27 years now? That's incredible, man. Kudos to you. That's, that's fantastic. That's, that's amazing to hear. Um, and, and thank you so much for coming on the show. 
you went five for five. You you technically won like both of my shows now. You've won both of my shows. So now I need to create another show called Stump the CJ. Uh, it was good to talk to you. And it's good to see you. And uh, I wish you the best, brother. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, you bet. Thanks. That was fun. Well, that is all for this week. Thanks to Matt Stanley for the show topic and to CJ Johnson for being my guest. And here is a child to which I am no relation. Thank you for listening to The Internet Says It's True. Don't forget to join up on Patreon if you want to see the unedited video of the guest appearance or to hear bonus episodes. You can do that at patreon.com slash Michael Kent. Also, if you learned something that you didn't already know from the show, please visit iTunes and leave us a review with five stars and a few words. That's the rule. You gotta do it. That helps us a ton because that's how the algorithm works to get the podcast suggested to more people. And that way we can keep learning something new if the internet says it's true. The Internet Says It's True would like to thank the Patreon subscribers whose monthly contributions help make this show possible. Sean Brown, Catherine Morgan, Taylor Hurt, Tony Ford, Bryce Swanson, Eugene Anderson, Matt McVeigh, Jim Martin, Joanne Martin, Josh Van Allen, and this show's official emperor, Kick Track. The show is written and produced by me, Michael Kent. The theme song is by Finite Music Forge, and additional music this week was from Esther Abrami, Zachariah Hickman, Carmen Maria, and Edu Aspinall. All audio clips in this episode are used for education and commentary and used under Fair Use Title 17 USC Section 107. You can listen to past episodes by searching for The Internet Says It's True wherever you get your podcasts, and you can see bonus content at patreon.com slash Michael Kent.